Thank you for joining us today. We're thrilled to present data from our phase one surpass trial with ADPA 2M4 CD8, our next generation T cell therapy targeting MAJ4 in multiple solid tumors, demonstrating some of the progress that we've made in our 2252 plan. I'd refer you to the press release we issued this morning for more detail and the disclaimers regarding forward-looking statements, which are also outlined here. At Adaptimmune, we share a vision and a mission to develop cell therapies to transform the lives of people with cancer. Today, we'll show you top-line data ahead of the ESMO poster out later this week with our next-generation cell therapy product that has now delivered clinical responses in five different solid tumor indications. We believe this product has the potential to bring meaningful benefits to many people with cancer. At our investor day last year, we laid out a five-year strategic plan for the company, also known as our 2252 plan. We're making good progress against each of these. The most recent update being the virtual update we posted last week on our allogeneic strategy, including the recently announced collaboration with Genentech and the news that we aim to file the IND for a major four targeted allogeneic therapy by late 2023. But today, we'll focus on these first two pillars and recent progress with our SURPASS trial and the implications of these data for our MAJ4 targeted franchise. Over the short term, we aim to have two products targeting MAJ4 on the market in the next five years, as well as two additional BLAs. We're working hard to file a BLA for our net first generation SPEAR T cell therapy targeting MAJ4 called a FAMIS cell next year for people with synovial sarcoma. I can now confirm that we've recently initiated SURPASS 2, a phase two trial for people with esophageal and EGJ cancers. Subject to data, this phase two trial could support a BLA for our second marketed product. We decided to initiate SURPASS 2 based on data from the phase one SURPASS trial with ADPA tool M4 CD8 that we presented at SITSI last year, showing tumor reductions in responses in these tumor types indicated by stars on the graph. Based on these initial data from SURPASS and data from our first generation phase one trial with a FAMA cell, we decided to focus the SURPASS trial on lung, head and neck, bladder and gastroesophageal cancers. And with all our early stage trials, we want to rapidly identify additional indications that can be advanced into late stage development. We've made significant progress with SURPASS since SITSI last year. I'll provide a brief overview of the compelling results and what they could mean for future indications, BLAs, and market potential before Elliot walks you through the clinical and translational data in more detail. And here's the waterfall plot that we'll present at ESMO later this week. We have clinical responses in five different solid tumor indications, an overall response rate of 36%, and a complete response in a patient with ovarian cancer. With a disease control rate of 86%, most patients receive benefit from our next generation product, which is an exceptional result given that patients in our trial are heavily pretreated and all have very advanced cancers. What I'll lay out in the next few slides is as follows. Firstly, these data support what we are aiming to accomplish with our next generation SPEAR T cell hypothesis. Secondly, that our data validate MAJ4 as a significant cancer target. And finally, I'll present the broad scope and potential of SPEAR T cells targeting MAJ4 in multiple solid tumor indications. At ESMO, we will show data from our translational research, demonstrating that ADPA2 and 4CD8 does exactly what we designed it to do. Kill cancer cells better, and engage the broader immune system to improve potency and clinical benefit. Let's look at what our hypothesis was. Our spear T cell therapies are a mix of both helper CD4 positive T cells and killer CD8 positive T cells. By expressing the CD8 alpha co-receptor in this next generation product, we aim to make it more potent by enabling helper CD4 T cells to kill tumor cells. Further, we also aim to have these cells retain their helper capabilities, which results in engagement of the broader immune system to fight cancer. We had strong preclinical data indicating that this next generation product had the potential to do both. 
And now we'll present data confirming that this actually happens in patients. ADPA2 and 4CD8 is more potent and does engage the broader immune system, both important product qualities considering we're trying to eliminate large bulky tumors. You'll be familiar with this slide and the following one as I presented them at our investor day last November. The second point that our ESMO data supports is that MAJ4 is a significant cancer target in multiple solid tumor indications and a target that can really only be addressed with a TCR mechanism. With MAJ4, there's a potential addressable patient population somewhere between well-known cancer targets like BRAF or FGFR. This slide takes an in-depth look at each indication where we've seen responses to date with our MAJ4 targeted spear T cells. We've already shown that our first generation MAJ4 targeted product, Famacel, is safe and effective in synovial sarcoma with additional encouraging data in another type of sarcoma, MRCLS, and we're preparing for our BLA filing next year. We've also shown responses in lung cancer and head and neck cancer and melanoma in our phase one trial with Afamisol. Today, the data from the SURPASS trial further validate that MAJ4 is a significant cancer target. We continue to see responses in cancers expressing MAJ4 beyond sarcoma. These include confirmed clinical responses in synovial sarcoma, gastroesophageal cancers, head and neck cancer, bladder cancer, and ovarian cancer. The total potential MAJ4 positive population is estimated at around 95,000 patients per year based on mortality data. Of those, we estimate around 40,000 also express HLA AO2. Because these data are based on mortality data, we believe these numbers are fairly conservative. That would increase as we're able to move up the line of treatment and develop further therapies. This is only the beginning for our wholly owned MAJ4 franchise. And we're working on further next-gen approaches, broader HLA candidates, and of course, all these assets can ultimately be used in our off-the-shelf or allogeneic program. In fact, we announced that we intend a MAJ4 targeted therapy to be our first allogeneic product in the clinic. I'm thrilled with the data from the SAPAS trial. We are well positioned to make a difference for people with cancer. And I continue to believe that value for patients will translate into value for investors. With that, I'll turn it over to Elliot to discuss the data in more detail. Thank you, Ed. Today, I will walk you through a top line summary of the data that Dr. David Hong will present in a poster at the upcoming ESMO conference. This quote from Dr. Hong is indicative of the excitement among our investigators. I wanna thank David and all of our investigators, as well as every healthcare professional working with them at the sites where we run our clinical trials. We also wanna extend our utmost gratitude to patients, their loved ones, and caregivers for taking part in our trials. We wanna transform the lives of people with cancer by designing and delivering cell therapies that are both effective and safe and can treat a broad range of cancers. The phase one surpass trial is our first trial to use a next generation cell therapy called ADP A2M4CD8. And Ad just walk you through the mechanism of action and how we believe the data we will present at ESMO substantiate that this next generation therapy does what we designed it to do. But I wanna take a moment and go back to the basics behind our spear T cell therapies. To make our cell therapies, we introduce an engineered T cell receptor or TCR into a patient's own T cells. This TCR is engineered using our proprietary technology to recognize cancer targets, such as MAJ4, in the context of HLA and kill cancers that express the target. The first generation MAJ4 targeted product, a Famacel, and our next gen product both express the same engineered TCR against MAJ4. With our first generation product, a Famacel, We've shown compelling clinical responses in our SPEARHEAD-1 trial, and these data will form the basis of our first BLA filing for market approval next year. The Phase 1 Afamacel trial also showed some clinical responses and anti-tumor activity in other solid tumors, as Ad just illustrated. However, 
we wanted to see more responses outside of sarcoma. And to that end, we designed what we intended to be a more potent next generation MAJ4 targeted product, ADP A2M4 CD8. The CD4 helper T cells and the CD8 killer T cells in this product, as Ed also explained, are both important to get an effective immune response against cancer. However, the helper T cells in our first generation therapy, a FAMA cell, did not effectively kill tumor cells, but they do provide important help to support the immune reaction by engaging the broader immune system, such as dendritic cells, and by producing inflammatory cytokines like IL-2 and interferon gamma. This next generation product, ADP A2M4 CD8, expresses the same MAJ4 targeted TCR as a FAMA cell, along with a CD8 alpha co-receptor, which is intended to increase potency. When we co-express CD8 alpha along with our MAJ4 targeted TCR, we enable CD4 helper T cells to kill tumor cells and still maintain their helper function producing signals needed to encourage a robust immune response against cancer. The data at ESMO that I will summarize in the next few minutes supports our hypothesis and show that our next generation product does what we designed it to do. SURPASS is a phase one trial with ADP A2M4 CD8 for people with multiple solid tumor indications. The trial is focused on enrolling patients with advanced gastric, esophageal, esophagogastric junction, bladder, lung, head and neck, and ovarian cancers. To be eligible for treatment, patients need to be HLA AO2 positive and have adequate MAJ4 expression. Efficacy is assessed by RESIS criteria and safety is monitored throughout the trial. Patients in the SURPASS trial are heavily pretreated and have late stage disease. They receive a range of cell doses from one to approximately 10 billion transduced cells. These are best overall response data for the 22 patients in the SURPASS trial who had at least one evaluable scan at the time of the data cutoff. As Ad explained, the overall response rate was 36%, including a complete response in a patient with ovarian cancer a partial response in two patients with ovarian cancer as well, two patients with head and neck cancer, and partial responses were also reported in one patient each with EGJ cancer, bladder cancer, and synovial sarcoma. You can see from the waterfall plot that the majority of patients experienced tumor reduction and the disease control rate was 86%. Even though the median duration of response has not yet been reached, initial durability is encouraging with several patients receiving clinical benefit for 24 weeks or more post-infusion. This slide is focused on the seven patients in the SURPASS trial with ovarian cancer. All patients with ovarian cancer treated to date have had reductions in their target lesions. With three stable disease, two partial responses, and a complete response. As with the larger data set, durability will continue to evolve for these patients. We are focused on enrolling more patients with ovarian cancer, as well as patients with lung, head and neck, bladder, and gastroesophageal cancers in the SURPASS trial. Here is a case study for the patient with ovarian cancer who had a complete response. This patient had high MAJ4 expression, was heavily pretreated, and platinum resistant. You can see a mass indicated by the arrow in the scan on the left that after treatment with ADP A2M4 CD8 spear T cells is completely absent in the scan on the right. This is an incredible response and shows the power of our cell therapy to address difficult to treat cancers. As of the ESMO cutoff date, this patient remains well and the complete response remains ongoing.
These figures show data from patients with EGJ and esophageal cancers. Based on early data we presented last year, we decided to start a phase two trial, surpass two in these indications, which I am pleased to announce has now initiated. There was tremendous unmet need in these cancers. And we have seen one response in EGJ cancer with tumor reduction in most patients with either esophageal or EGJ cancers, demonstrating the potential for ADP A2M4 CD8 to have a meaningful impact. To make the best cell therapies for people with cancer, we need to understand how our products work. We designed our next generation cell therapy to be more potent to fight solid tumors that express MAJ4. Our preclinical data indicated that adding CD8 alpha enabled CD4 helper T cells to kill tumor cells in vitro and also become super helper cells, producing more inflammatory cytokines than the first gen T cells to support a more robust and broader immune response. Dr. Hong will present data at ESMO from in vitro killing assays comparing manufactured patient products from our first generation MAJ4 spear T cells with patient products used in the SURPASS trial. With these data, we demonstrate that the next generation helper cells with the CD8 alpha co-receptor kill tumor cells more effectively than first gen CD4 helper cells. Further, cytokine analyses from patients' serum samples indicate that the next gen helper T cells are more effective at supporting a broader immune response. We also present data in the poster that demonstrate a higher level of IL-12 in patient serum who received the next generation product compared to the first gen. Because IL-12 is produced by dendritic cells and is not known to be produced by T cells, it's a very good indicator of a broader immune cell engagement. This slide outlines the safety experience in the SURPASS trial as of the data cutoff. The most common adverse event related to T cells was cytokine release syndrome, or CRS, which occurred in 72% of patients, with 16% being grade three or greater. 16% of patients experienced immune effector cell-associated neurotoxicity syndrome, or ICANS, related to T cells another AE of special interest. There were eight serious AEs of CRS and three of ICANs related to T cells. And unfortunately, one patient experienced a fatal SAE of pancytopenia. Overall, this is an acceptable safety profile. I believe these initial data are very encouraging. We've seen meaningful responses across multiple tumor types, and this next generation product has generally been well tolerated. These data demonstrate that ADP A2M4 CD8 does what it was designed to do, produce a more potent anti-tumor response and better CD4 help when compared to our first generation products. Safety and efficacy, including duration of response, will continue to be evaluated in this ongoing trial, which is enrolling eligible patients with gastroesophageal, head and neck, lung, bladder, and ovarian cancers. We've recently initiated a phase two trial, surpass two, for people with esophageal and EGJ cancers. We remain committed to making cell therapies that can address a broad range of solid tumors and aim to identify additional indications for late phase development from this and other signal finding trials. Thank you to everyone for your attention and we look forward to updating data in due course.